Jeff, and I want to talk about a concept called default scale to frame size. And you're going to find this here in Premiere Pro in your preferences under general. Now this little switch here, default scale to frame size, does one thing. When you import, and only when you import, will it sit back and rescale pictures to, for you, or any object, to 100%. Now, here's the basic idea. When I bring in large oversized stills, for example here, I'm just going to open up on my computer. I have this nice large oversized still. Oh, that's my daughter. Everybody go aw. When I get info about this, I'd like you to see this is a 1936 by 2592. This is a nice big picture I can scale around. So let's go ahead and bring that in into Premiere Pro. Right now, default scale to frame size is off. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to go to the media browser. There's that picture. I'm just going to drag directly to the timeline. A little sloppy. This gets added automatically to the project. So when I bring the shot in, you can see she comes in nice and big. When I go here, you can see it's automatically added to the project. But the idea here is with this selected, I'm going to go look at my effect controls. And I'm going to roll open the motion tab. You can see the scale is 100%. It's showing this one-to-one -one pixel mapping. And when I go ahead here in the program monitor and I scale back to say 10% size when I click on this you can see all of that high-res goodness I can go ahead and scale around this I've obviously would want to rotate this say 90 degrees and I could scale it down to fit the screen given the aperture I'm working with but it's just this idea here that this is a hundred percent and it retains all of the wonderful detail and data in our picture. Now we should see the, the other way this works. I'm going to go ahead here and go to my preferences and to general and I'm going to say turn on default scale of frame size. Now everything that I bring in will get down sampled on the fly and a hundred percent will be the size of the aperture. In this case, this is a set 1280 by 720 project. So this is a 720 element. So when I bring in these ducks here and I drag them in, they're going to fit the picture perfectly. Notice it scaled it down. It actually scaled the vertical or the horizontal, whichever it hits first. Let me go ahead here and make this nearly to fit. Let's make it about 50%. When I click on this, notice the difference here under the motion is this is 100%, which means I can't easily pan and scan around this. I can probably bump it 30%, but I've lost some of the real raw information because the switch is there. Okay, so now the question becomes, why would you ever want to turn the switch on? And that's a fantastic question. Two answers. You want to turn it on. Let's say you had a hundred pictures. You want to dump them and do quick dissolves. It's going to make them fit the aperture, you know, whether it's high def or standard def or even two or three or four K, it's going to make it fit for you perfectly. So you won't have to go in and resize it. You could just throw them all in, throw it out and dissolve in between them all and move on. The other is, is that when you deal with very large pictures, say like you were shooting off of a DSLR that shot a 12 or a 14 or a 16 megapixel picture, your renders will be faster if 100% is the actual full aperture, in this case 1280 by uh, 720, because it won't have to calculate and push as many pixels. So generally we leave this off, but we want you to understand the way it works. So you want it off if you want to get to all of that full res goodness, be it stills, or even if say if you were to take a high def clip and put it in a standard def timeline, and you want to maybe turn it off to get, or turn it on to get faster renders and have to do less scaling and resizing work.